And welcome back. We've been talking tonight about how the war on terror has negated so many of our constitutional rights, including the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. But perhaps the most critical of those rights, the right to life, has also vanished depending on whether a U.S. citizen is deemed a terrorist. If you are, apparently there's no need for charges or a trial. That is what U.S. citizen Anwar Awalaki's family discovered late last year. Well, it was back in April. In fact, it was one of the very first reality checks I did here at Fox 19. I talked about the attempted execution of cleric Anwar Awalaki, who was in Yemen. At the time, I told you that Awalaki was a U.S. citizen, born in Las Cruces, New Mexico. He lived in the U.S. until he was seven years old. His family then returned to their home country of Yemen. The death of Awalaki is a major blow to Al-Qaeda's most active operational affiliate. Well, that is true. Awalaki was the head of Al-Qaeda in Yemen, and after the death of Osama bin Laden, Awalaki was the most influential leader in Al-Qaeda. U.S. intelligence say that he was the one who influenced the Fort Hood shooter, Major Nadal Hassan. They also say he influenced the wannabe Christmas Day underwear bomber, and the foiled Times Square bomber last year, also reportedly influenced by Awalaki. They've been tracking him for months. In fact, in May, the president put out an executive order saying he could be killed or captured. Uh, it's the first time we've done that with a U.S. citizen. And that is also true. Awalaki was, until his death Friday, a United States citizen and killed with him during that bombing a second U.S. citizen who published a jihad newsletter. It is true that both men could be regarded as enemies of the United States. But does the government deciding you are an enemy of the state mean that your rights under the Constitution are suspended? Neither of these men were killed on a battlefield. As U.S. citizens, they were not charged with any crimes. They were not indicted by a grand jury. They were not given a military tribunal. Instead, the president ordered their deaths without any due process. And that due process is not just some good idea. It's the very structure of our Constitution. This targeted assassination program started under President Bush and has greatly expanded under the Obama administration. There's so much that's unconstitutional. Somebody said, uh, are you able to, would you be able to vote to impeach that? I said, I probably would have been able to impeach all the presidents. <laughs> but that is not going to happen. Republican presidential candidate Ron Paul, one of the lone voices challenging this action, alluding to the fact that the president ordering the death of any American citizen violates the Constitution and could be an impeachable offense. Paul, by the way, though, acknowledged that there would not be any kind of support for that action in the U.S. Senate. So here's what you need to know. The Fort Hood shooter, Major Nadal Hassan, is a U.S. citizen. He actually shot and killed people in cold blood at Fort Hood, but was not executed. He gets a trial. The man who influenced him, also a U.S. citizen, is killed without due process, simply by order of the president. And because the information against him is classified, no one, not even U.S. courts, can even see the evidence of why he had to be killed. You see, this issue isn't about Anwar Awalaki. It's not about President Bush. It's not even about President Obama. It's about a nation's constitution that keeps that kind of power out of the hands of one man for a reason. And that is Reality Check. And a quick note there, uh, two weeks after Awalaki's death, his 16-year-old son, was also killed by drone strike. That son was at a barbecue with family members. And so that power to assassinate citizens without trial, it remains a very serious issue. In fact, one Republican lawmaker found a way that he thinks resolves the issue. Just strip those terror suspects of their citizenship in the first place. It's called the EEA. And I'll tell you about that after this break.